So now we've got the drums routed to a drum bus and we're going to have a look at Neutron 4's compressor. So let's have a little blast of the drums. So that's how they're sounding. So, Neutron 4 compressor. So let's have a look at the interface first of all. So we have the module header up here. And we can choose to view some different options from here. We can talk about that. We have the controls down in the bottom left, meters and display here, and of course the I.O. section over here. Okay, so first of all, we can choose to view our multiband crossover points here. So, or we can choose to view an oscilloscope. So here's where we can actually go ahead and learn. To again, find those areas of interest. And now whatever we do, is gonna be specific to the band that we have selected. Now let's switch these off because we wanna work full band to start with. Now the next option is an oscilloscope. Next option in terms of what we can view. And this is really useful. It allows us to visualize the output of the compressor. So let's actually just change some parameters here. So you can see that being reflected in your oscilloscope. Really, really useful. And then we have the ability to reset things here as well to go back to the default position for everything. Okay, so let's have a look at our different modes here, starting with punch. Now punch is somewhere between a kind of transient shaper and a compressor. And it has a lot of under the hood kind of compression within this amount control. So it kind of is a one knob, kind of increase the punch or decrease the punch. So let's have a listen. Let's go back onto our oscilloscope. So you can hear the punch being increased and decreased as we move that parameter. Now we can choose to have an attack time to this. And we also have a sustain time. So we can choose to dial in exactly the kind of envelope contour to the punch that we want. And of course we could do this in parallel. So if you want to get a bit more snap, that's a great way of doing it. Okay, let's reset again. Let's just take off our multi-band crossover points. So let's have a look at Modern next. Now Modern is more of a traditional compressor. In fact, Modern and Vintage are both the more traditional compressor with a threshold, ratio, tack release, etc. Now Modern is a modern compression type, quite transparent. Vintage is going to be a little bit more lively, a bit more groovy, a bit more coloured, a bit more rich. And we have three different ways that we can detect the incoming signal. We can use RMS, root means squared, and that means the signal is going to be averaged out. We can use peak, which is going to respond more to the peak level, or true, which is like RMS, but the average signal is going to be spread across the frequency range. Let's try peak first of all, bring the threshold down. This is the point at which the sound is going to start being compressed. You can hear compression kicking in. We've got a ratio amount of compression. I'm sure we're all aware of the parameters on a compressor. Attack, amount of time it takes the compressor to kick in. And release is the kind of groove of the compressor once the sound falls below the threshold again. So it can be quite smooth or quite lively. Makeup gain allows us to statically increase the gain or decrease it, depending on what we're trying to do. And we have a gain reduction meter here. We can bring this in in parallel as well. Now, we also have the ability to use a side chain trigger here, but we're going to come back to that later. So let's compare modern to vintage. Let's bring down the ratio a bit.
So the vintage is kind of subtly a little bit more forward in the speakers, I'd say. A bit more alive, a bit more rich. I think it sounds really nice on this sound, actually, in the vintage mode. Now, we also have the ability to choose what the compressor is going to be responding to. So let's say we wanted the compression to be centered a bit more around the kick drum. Well, we could take away the high frequencies here. And you'll see the compressor's pumping a little bit more with the kick. We can also audition what it is we're going to be using as a trigger. So now the compressor is going to be responding to the kick, which means we're going to get much more of the groove of the kick triggering the compression. We could change that to be more the high frequencies that we wanted. See, the gain reduction is much more pumpy. It's responding much more to the hi-hats. Kick. Hi-hats, so it sounds a lot more shaken up with the hi-hats because obviously there's more of them, they're faster, they've got shorter decays. So depending on what it is you're trying to do, you could choose to respond to different parts of the frequency spectrum. I'd say generally the main kind of pulse of whatever the sound is, is going to be the best choice in terms of what you're going to want to kind of align the compression to. Now it's important to note that this detection circuit is only visible in the modern and the vintage modes. Okay, so let's have a look at the sidechain option here. Now I'm just going to close this down and let's come to the base and let's add a Neutron 4 compression on the base. Let's sidechain to the kick and we'll just work on the low band, put it into modern mode and let's bring in the compressor here and we'll leave it on the full setting. So now what we're going to be doing is triggering compression using the kick drum only on the low band of the bass. So let's solo the bass. So you can see the kick drum triggering the compression on the bass. We're only working on the low band of the bass, which kind of makes sense because that's the area where the kick and the bass are going to cross over the most is in the low frequencies. And also that's what's going to be triggering a lot of the gain, which is going to take away our available headroom when those two sounds sum up together. So it can be quite a nice way of managing the crossing over of the kick and the bass, especially in kind of loud bass heavy genres of music. So that was sidechaining to the kick, putting it in the sidechain slot here and then using the sidechain option down at the bottom here. And finally, we have a gain, overall gain, which we can set to auto if we want to have a makeup gain as well. And that is Neutron 4's compressor. So to recap, we had a look at the header up here where we can choose to set the crossover points, detection circuit if we're in modern and vintage mode, and the oscilloscope view as well. We can trigger using RMS, average, true average, which is going to be kind of set up to be a little bit more transparent and then peak which is going to be responding to peak signal we can learn to set kind of bass mid and treble controls for the compressor set on the program material reset from here punch is like a transient shape and we can dial in punch we can set attack and sustain settings here and a makeup gain modern is and vintage are going to be traditional compression types but this is a more of a modern transparent compression a clean compression vintage is more colored vibey a bit more groovy brings sounds out a little bit more so depending on whether you want to bring a sound through and give it more character, you'd use vintage. Maybe you want something to be a little bit more transparent and not a prominent sound, then maybe you'd go for more clean, modern compression. It depends on the sound in question. Okay, so now we've covered the compressor. In the next video, we're going to have a look at the transient shaper. So I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.